In this video, we're going to be introducing the product rule and also the quotient rule for polynomials. And this applies to differentiation of polynomials. So we're assuming you've already done some initial work on it. So in, if you had something like this in the past, y equals x cubed times x squared minus 7. Prior to learning this one here, the product rule, because we can actually see that that's a product of two things, x cubed and x squared minus 7. You, previously, you would have had to expand that using the distributive rule first and then uh, differentiate each of the power terms. Now, that's no major hardship. If I guess if we had things that were a bit, uh, a bit longer, like something like this uh, quadratic here, for exist, just as an example, multiplied <coughs> by this other cubic, I'm just, you know, using some example here. You could expand that out too, but it'd be a bit of a nuisance, wouldn't it? So is there a better way? Also, you see the quotient rule there. Do you know how to differentiate something like this? A cubic over a quadratic, for example. So... Are there better ways? Are there more efficient rules? And there are. We can come up with the, the product rule by looking at derivatives from first principles using some of our limit theorems. And that is not part of the scope of this video, but it starts like that using limits. And after a whole lot of other steps, we get down to here and we find that this is the result. So that's what we're going to focus on right now. So the derivative of a function times another function, so the product of two functions, is given by that there. So we're going to analyze that now, and then we'll repeat the same with the quotient rule. So we just saw the proof end with the... It, this, this first one is in what's called operator notation that you should be familiar with. So the derivative with regards to x of these two functions, the first one being f of x and the second being g of x, and they're grouped together in some square brackets because it's a product. So the product of two functions, f of x and g of x. So we, what we do is basically get the second function and multiply it by the derivative of the first function. See the derivative symbol there. And if we can simplify that, we do so. Then we add that to the first function, multiply the derivative of the second. So that's in operator notation. We can use a more uh, abbreviated notation. So the derivative of y is v times u dash plus u times v dash. Now, that means the same thing. That's when we have y is the product of u times v. So, that's see, that's two functions together, but basically that's abbreviated. It's a very simple notation. The other one is um, <clears throat> the differential notation. dy dx equals v times du dx plus u times dv dx. That's where we have, again, the product of two functions where y equals y of x, I suppose, <coughs> equals u of x times v of x. Or, U, or just u times v for short, just like that there. Okay, they all mean the same thing. That So you basically got the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. And we, if possible, we simplify. Sometimes it's important to have our answer in factorized form. Sometimes we need it expanded. So here's an example. We have to find the derivative of 4x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4 multiplied by 4x to the 5th 
plus 7x. So we have two polynomials there. So that one there will be the first one, which we could call u. And this one we can call the second one v. Now I'm just using the uh, the third notation. It, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at this st stage at all. Um, so just I'll just keep that notation there. That's the one <clears throat> that we're using. So let's find the derivative. So the derivative, so that equals v. Now we just write v down. So that part there. So 4x to the fifth plus 7x. Keep the brackets there. And the derivative of the first with regards to x. So that's the derivative of the yellow one. <clears throat> so with regards to x, so we again put that in brackets to group it. So that would be 12x squared minus 6x. And that's it. Then plus the first of the two functions and just write it in and the derivative of the second one which will be 20x to the power 4 plus 7 now often that's fine that answer just like that sometimes <coughs> um, you need to expand that out as a big long polynomial and simplify and add and subtract like terms it depends on the situation but if if it's not important to do that just leave it in that factorized form so if we have a quotient now now remember quotient is the result of of division so we're talking about the division of two functions so we have some function just called q of x here it doesn't really matter what its name is and you can see that it has one function divided by another and beyond the scope of this video but it can be proven with limits um, that we get the quotient rule which ends like that and the final result you can see there so we're going to analyze that in the same way now and then do an example so the quotient rule um, if we have a quotient there f of x divided by g of x so we take the derivative of that so what we do is we've got in, this is in function notation. So the, this, the bottom one, the one on the bottom, the second or the, the lower written function, g of x, multiplied by the derivative of the top one on the numerator, minus this time. So notice that it was plus for the product rule. We have a minus here for the quotient rule. Then it's f of x, the, the numerator function, the function in the numerator of the quotient, times or multiplied by g dash of x, the derivative of the denominator function. Now, over g of x, which is squared. So the proof explains why this it why this is the way it is and it takes a bit of time to prove and explain that so that would be for a different source or a different video to see where all that comes from the same thing can be written in a more uh, compressed or a briefer notation so if we have y dash that would be v times u dash minus u times v dash over v squared now don't get this one mixed up they're dashes as in the derivative they're not ones okay it's the that's that notation u dash means the derivative okay and so they're not ones and twos the bottom is a two it's a squared the top ones are dashes so that's when that's when y equals u over v okay it's a quotient of two functions there and likewise we can write down in differential notation or Leibniz notation uh, v times du dx minus u times dv dx dv over dx is often um, 
talked to talked about as dvdx okay it's often said that way and it's all over v squared again it's like that or sometimes because you see the all of these functions are in regards to x uh u and v certainly are so basically that would be a fuller representation of the situation the three notations all mean the same thing <clears throat> okay they all follow the same pattern as it were so let's finish with an example if we have y equals 3t minus 4 over 2t plus 5 find y dash so I'm going to use this compressed notation here so basically y dash equals v u dash minus u v dash over v squared so just showing it with the other notation <clears throat> so we've got v remember v is on the denominator so we've got to find we've got to write v down there's v 2t plus 5 now put it in brackets to group it correctly. U dash is the derivative of the numerator. So 3t minus 4 is the derivative of that is just 3. Minus, again we write the numerator function down, the numerator expression, and v dash is the derivative of the bottom. Okay, all over v squared. So that's 2t plus 5 all squared. Okay, we've subbed into the rule. We have a little bit of work to do on this one. So on the numerator, we can um, simplify this first term by going 6t plus 15, then minus 6t. Now be careful, that'll be minus 8 there, minus, ne minus 8 or minus negative 8 is plus 8. Be careful. Okay, over 2t plus 5 all squared. Now we've got 6t take 6t, which is 0, and we have 15 plus 8, which is 23. So 23 over 2t plus 5 all squared. So there we have a demonstration of the product rule and quotient rule for simple polynomials.